morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Church. It's good to have our world travelers back from their trip. And uh, we were a little thin last week, and uh, so it is good. I don't have any separate announcements, except we will have a luncheon reception um, after, uh, as soon as I get back from Park Avenue, we'll begin. So, uh, uh, so hopefully that'll be about, what, what time were you thinking? 12.30? We were thinking 12, but okay. whenever you're back. Uh, that pastor talks too much for that, so, <laughs> so as soon as I can get back. So uh, fried chicken, I understand, and uh, so that'll be wonderful. We are glad to have you here. Again, are there any other announcements this morning? Okay. Let's start with the morning prayer then. <laughs> Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. The invitation to God, the opening, the opening song is, My life is in you, Lord. If you need to follow along, it's in the Faith We Sing book and on the screen. Thank you. 
Dear Heavenly Father, you are a God of compassion and we give you thanks. We thank you for your presence with us this past week. Remind us as we worship today of what really matters. We are not here to be entertained. We are here to be active participants, focusing on kindness, love, and our sacred work in you. God, you are so good. Come into our midst right now and worship with us. Pray this in your Son's name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn is Great is Thy Faith. with ties of love. 
To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. And will they not return to Egypt, and will not Assyria rule over them, because they refuse to repent? A sword will flash in their cities, it will devour their false prophets, and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me, even though they call me God most high. I will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I give you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboiah? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. It will not carry, I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again. For I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come against their cities. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come from Egypt trembling like sparrows, from Assyria fluttering like doves. I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. And then the New Testament reading is from over in Luke. Luke 12, 13 to 21. And this is the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? And then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. This is the word of God for the people of God. message today is called, What Does God Want? We'll look first at Hosea again, but I want to say first off, this message in Hosea is a different tone from what we heard last week, or from those weeks that we were reading from the book of Amos. It isn't, an, it isn't really an angry message as it has been the last three weeks. In Hosea today, it talks about God loving Israel. But the more God loved, the more Israel turned away. You heard what I just read. They made sacrifices to Baal and they burned incense to idols. God gave and gave, took care of Ephraim, guiding the Jewish nation, feeding them. They needed to repent. Plans did not include God. They call God the Most High, but they don't live like it. And God says, I cannot lift them up as a model nation. And God does not want to treat Israel badly. His heart is not like that. He's a God of compassion, not a God of anger. And God is saying, I just want them to follow me. Let them come back to me. Trembling as they will, they need to settle down and serve me, says the Lord. I wonder if he's saying that about America today. Just a thought. Just a thought. And then our gospel lesson in Luke, it starts out with someone in the crowd saying, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. 
And Jesus responds, who made me the judge between you and your brother? And then Jesus warns us about greed. He tells us life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And that's an important point he makes. And then he tells that parable of the rich fool. The abundant harvest, building bigger barns. He'll have a surplus, and then he'll lay back and take life easy. Not realizing that God that night would demand of him his life. And then that last sentence in that passage of Luke, this is how it will be. Whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich for God. This is not, and I'll say that very clearly, this is not a condemnation at all of being rich. Please don't think it that way. It's a message about priorities. And there are many rich people very, very many wealthy people who have their priorities in order. One of those, and I'm going to step out on a limb here and tell you about a person that I admire. Don't know him, of course, but give you a little biography. His name is Warren Buffett. You've heard of him, haven't you? Yes? Yes? He was born with a gift for numbers. Warren Buffett served in his early years as a stockbroker and a U.S. congressman. He attended the University of Pennsylvania, but later graduated from his home at the University of Nebraska. That's where he's from. He received his master's in economics from Columbia and furthered his education at the New York Institute of Finance. And he formed the Buffett Partnership in Omaha, that's where he's from, in 1956, and became very successful in buying undervalued companies. And one such company that he bought was called Berkshire Hathaway, a textile company. And Buffett later phased out the textile division and made Berkshire Hathaway a media, insurance, and oil conglomerate. He has made fortunes with Coca-Cola, Citigroup, and Gillette. But what does one of the richest people and most respected business people in the world do with his fortune as he ages? Do you know the answer to that? In June of 2006, Buffett announced that he would be giving his entire fortune away to charity, committing 85% to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, becoming the largest act of charitable giving in U.S. history. After that, he kept making fortunes. He purchased H.J. Hines, I don't know if you knew that or not, our own Pennsylvania company here in 2013. He purchased Kraft Foods Group and Duracell a few years later. Buffett is faced and beat prostate cancer in 2012. And today his largest holdings are in Apple Computer and Bank of America. He has formed a healthcare company for his employees that focuses on tech technology and not profit. He has said that healthcare is a hungry tapeworm of the American economy. So this formation of a new company hopes to curb health care costs. He has done many things to help America, and someday will give away all that he's had. Compared to the man in our scripture lesson who built up bigger barns and laid back all for himself and his own riches, Buffett, as I've said, intends to give it all away. Friends, what does God want? from our living. Well, first off, in the Old Testament reading, he wants us to turn to him and to live for him. His grace was given and has been given over and over and over again to the Israelites. 
and his grace is given to us. He just wants us to serve him. And from our New Testament reading today, we know God does not want us to be greedy. He wants us to be rich toward him. He wants us to be giving toward others. Most of us will not give away our full wealth as Warren Buffett intends to do. But he, God wants us to be generous to others. An example of the grace of God changing others is in the Zacchaeus story. You remember that story. I'm going to read that scripture just, just for a minute. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. I have a lot of similarities to Zacchaeus. I'm not going to go further than that. So. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. That's not my similarity. But anyway, he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Then people began to talk like they do. They began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone out of anything, I'll pay them back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. We too are to have changed lives under our commitment to Christ. Has your life changed? Do you live for God? Or do you live for money in yourself, as a rich man did in the parable? Again, it's just a question of priorities. What does God want from us? Well, we know from Micah 6, 8, and I've referenced this with you all already, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. But how does that demonstrate itself in our life? Well, in Exodus, way back there, one of the books of the Torah, Exodus 22, 3. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. So God does not want us to place anything in front of him. And then in Philippians 1, 10, Paul says, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. In an article in Christian Today, not Christianity Today, Christian Today, it says we must first have a walking relationship with God, second, love others, including ourselves, our families, our church, and our neighbors. And you might say our priorities should be God, family, church, country, work, something is missing there and that's neighbor now we talked about this several weeks ago when Jesus was asked who is my neighbor remember he told that story of the good Samaritan again it was just several weeks ago we talked about it and then Jesus asked on that Samaritan road who was the neighbor and the answer was the one who showed mercy and Jesus said go and do likewise Friends, so what am I babbling about so much today? I've talked about two scriptures, very different ones. I've told you about Warren Buffett and his end-of-life priorities. I've talked about our priorities. God first, above all else. Some of you, like us, have that placard or that sign up in our house, Faith, Family, Friends, right? You've seen it. Those are this household's priorities. But again, what does God want from us? I say to you this. God first. 
family and friends second, and then I'll go back to the days of Gail Sayers and Brian Piccolo, I am third. And I'll say more about that in future messages. But when you put God first, and you care about others, you have to care and show mercy to others. So in conclusion today, I have to ask you, what does God want of you, of me? What are our priorities? If your 12-year-old son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter is asking you today, daddy or granddaddy, mom or grandma, what really matters? What if they ask you that? What is important, grandma? What would you say? I ask you today, are you rich? Are you rich toward God? It's your answer. Amen. Let us turn now to our hymn of response. And it's, it's just a wonderful old hymn. We don't sing it very much. Number 374 in your hymnal and on the screen. Standing on the promises. So you can't sit when you're talking about standing. So please rise. <laughs>
first one we had, there's the friend with stage four cancer. And I don't know if this is the same person or not. Pope has asked for prayer for a young nursing friend, Bonnie Myers, who's in her 30s, stage four ovarian cancer with two young children. So if you could remember Bonnie Myers in your prayer. And you see our, our list there, um, the ones that we put on there last week, we ask that you continue to lift those people up. If anybody wants to comment on any of those, you're welcome to. So let's share our joys and concerns. How about joys right now? It's a little cooler this morning, a little bit. I heard it was hot in Europe. Not all of us. Brain was telling me that I can't believe this, but I guess it's Europe. But not all the hotels in Europe have AC, so that's amazing. What's that? Or restaurants. Or restaurants. Well, Craig, I know they don't put ice in their soda, but anyway. Anyway, so. And that's it is that is wonderful. I heard the fashion play was, you said it was just one of them. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so how about other joys and concerns today? Well, I thought I'm thankful for technology because I got a, a video from my daughter in law, Brooke, <coughs> with um, feeding our little grandson. There you go. Yeah. And he just had his first bout. Timing or we do that and yeah. also, she also videos and send my videos. Wonderful. Technology is good when it works. But anyway. I'm all right. Where did you go, Susie? Oh, okay. You were big fish. on roaming or yeah, yeah you did okay <laughs> what's that did. you're dead and did okay right. so again back to technology again it's wonderful so others of you joys or concerns my friend with cancer his name's Gary and he's actually going to he had my office he's going to uh, uh, John Hopkins Gary with cancer. Others, go ahead. Good friend at work whose husband had, had cancer. He passed away last Friday. She has a young son who has autism. This, this is the wife? Has, yeah. yeah, okay. And she has a 16 year old daughter. And the husband yeah. passed, you say. Carolyn is her name, yes. Okay, thank you, Laura. Oh, okay. So, wife Carolyn, two children. Okay. And, uh, 
had a wonderful time in Jeff. It was just the day. I'm sure all of you know more about Camp. I used to be on the board there but at Camp Joel, but I'm sure you all know more about Camp Joel than I do. But they do a wonderful job. That's all I'll say. And uh, uh, their CIA program and their something 412 program and so on. They just do a wonderful job. So yeah, let's let's praise for for Paige's time there and for Camp. Yeah. Any more this morning for traveling mercies? As a lot of you were traveling different places all over the all over the globe, and uh, but but locally as well. Just as you go up and down 81, you're just praising God that you make it home. And, uh, right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks. For being, as you said in scripture today, a God of compassion, a God of love. Thank you for your safety and your mercies and grace to us each and every day. Now, Lord, we've mentioned a number of people today who are having tremendous health issues. And I didn't I didn't mention uh, Hope's friend Ward Phillips, who had a bad fall. Be with him as well. And each of these people with cancer, different levels, different types, the person with leukemia. Be with them, be with their families, and be with these families that have lost and are grieving as they've lost loved ones to cancer. Father, these are the things that make us step back and wonder why. Why me, Lord? What have I done? And Lord, we do have to step back. But in so doing, we just have to ask you to continue to walk with us, be with us. We know that the sickness is not from you. It's from the pain and destruction that came into the world when sin entered the world. But Lord, we are asking you as a God of compassion, as a Prince of Peace and Great Physician, that you would be with these individuals that we've mentioned today. Lord, hear our prayers. And make us a people that care about you and care about others. Help us this week, Lord, to pick up the phone and call or text or email so that we might communicate caring and your love as a witness for you. Lord, we celebrate the joys too. The joys of camps, the joys of safety, the joys of just living in this valley beauty of this, this valley on these hot summer days. Make us a thankful people as well as a loving, caring people. So Lord, we bring all of these prayer requests to you today. Knowing you will answer. Lord, help us give you the glory. We pray all of this today in your son's name who taught us to pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. God is good to us, and we reflect his goodness by giving back. Thank you for your giving to St. John's Church and to furthering the kingdom of God. Please rise now as we sing the doxology, followed by the prayer of dedication. upon you and give you and your household peace now and always. Amen.